Jen, it is awesome to see you. I usually start with that, but I just saw you in person 10 seconds. Oh, well, not even 10 seconds ago. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm good. I'm excited about 2024. We've got some cool stuff coming up. So, <laughs> but it feels like this, especially the last month, just went by way too fast. So, yeah, I would say the last quarter. I mean, with travel and everything that kind of started toward the end of September, beginning of October, all the way through the end of the year, October, November, December have just been pretty crazy. Yep. Went really fast. For those of you who have not met Jen before, Jen and I have been married for 25 years as of September, and she is my better half. She keeps everything going, both inside the household and with me. What's the exciting thing that we want to announce today? We want to announce the Phoenix Club and that we were asked if we wanted to take over the group, and we said yes. So we are excited about what we have to come and it's building upon the group that you were a part of from the very beginning. So I think it was the perch initially with Dan Cockrell and then Jody um, took that over. I'm not sure how long Dan had it before Jody took over, but Jody took over and it became the Phoenix club. Jody now had asked us if we wanted to take over and run the Phoenix club. And so that's what we will be doing in 2024. Yeah. So that's added to the last six weeks. And I mean, we're building on the foundation that was set by you know, both Dan and Jody and a number of members who've been a part of this club right from the beginning. So uh, carrying on that legacy is extremely important to me. I've been a part of it. And I know it's extremely important to Jen, just in the conversations that we've had. So th thank you, Dan, for trusting Jody and Jody for trusting us. Yeah, it's going to be exciting. I it's what has it been? Six weeks, maybe, maybe four. I'm not sure, but um, for me, because I was not a part of that group before, it's been getting to know some of the people that were in the club and thankfully have decided to join us in 2024. So slowly, I'm getting to know people that are involved and what they are interested in, what they do. Um, so yeah, it's been fun. We've had a couple people that have already given us ideas, things that they are looking forward to or would like to start in 2024 within the group. And I think that's great. I, I love that they're comfortable enough to let us know what they need out of the group because that's what the group is for, is for them to get support and community and brainstorming ideas and all of that, like a safe place for people to come in and ask questions and and just really rise together. And, and Mike, you can talk about that more because we have three areas that we're kind of focusing on. Yeah. And they're over my shoulder for anybody who ends up catching some of the video stuff that we put out there, but the three areas are growth in business, growth in family and growth in self and how all of those intersect uh, with each other. And so that's the, those are three broad themes relative to you know, who it's for and where we're going to focus time, energy, and attention. You know, our, our goal with this is that any of the content that we share, any of the people that we bring in as speakers, any of the sessions that we have, someone will be able to take out at least one thing that applies to growth in their business, growth from a family perspective, or growth in self. We also had a chance to get a group together or I had a chance to join a group that was already getting together back when I was in Orlando in December. And we saw some Phoenicians in the wild, had a little bit of fun with the spelling on a t-shirt, embraced it. And, and I think that just highlights the type of fun that we want to have together because we know all of the things that we're working on are really hard. You know, whether it's operating a business or operating your family or getting out of your own head, all of this stuff is really hard it gets, we get better, or at least we feel more, we start to build confidence when we get a chance to work together, to grow together. Yeah, absolutely. I, I have a question, just a clarification, I think that maybe people are asking, but do you have to be a business owner to be part of the group or can it just be bettering your role, your role in within a company? Yeah, right. It's one of the cool things that's happened is as we've had a chance to get to know more of the people that are in the group already, and some of the people who had been part of the group who've come back. You don't need to be a business owner, and you don't. And that means you could either be you could be an entrepreneur that operates inside a business who wants to do better, be better, 
think differently and do differently. You could, you know, as a stay-at-home parent who's trying to figure out kind of what's next and where do you go and how do you apply transferable skills into the workplace if that's where you want to go? How do you build better things inside your family? At first, it starts with kids and you know now we're getting close to the point where the two that we'll have inside the house are going to be dogs as the kids, as the kids leave, but it's just, it's, you know, the cool thing about families and business is their, their teams, their units of groups of people that move, that move forward. So no, you don't need to be a business owner. There are business owners in the group. You don't need to be an entrepreneur. There are entrepreneurs in the group. You don't need to be a solopreneur. There are solopreneurs in the group. You don't need to be a business leader, although there are business leaders that are inside the group. You really want to be the, t- you need to be the type of person who knows that you will get better and you will improve by helping others get better and improve. And as we work through those things together, we truly all do get better together. Yeah. And I, I think too, we've also said that I think it can be a little scary if you're not a business owner or you're not a business leader or something. But as we've talked to other people and you and I have talked, uh, everybody has something to to contribute to the group. And we all, at least in the short time that I've been interacting with people, we all learn something from people that are in the group. And it could be, quote, silly things like we learned about how to make a new cocktail like that. But but it's something that was fun and something that you learn and you can t- and share it with your family or your friends or whatever. So it everybody has something to share. Uh, that's hard for me that we've also had a conversation with some people with what is your purpose? You, Mike, you had posted something on LinkedIn. And so that kind of started a conversation with some people and that can be very difficult for some of us, me, especially included to figure out. And so this group though, I'm hoping will exist to help people that are struggling with that to figure that out. And then those that do already know their purpose, because we do have people in the group that already know and they are committed and great and that's great, but we can all come alongside them and help them to elevate their purpose. So I I think that's, that's good because you can be kind of quote starting this journey or you can be kind of farther along in it, but we're all able to provide something to each other. And I, I think a couple of people have you know, demonstrated that really well in a in a couple of different ways. Not, not only the conversation that we had as a group on the 26th, so we had a small group of people who came together on the 26th. And we typically, not typically, we have calls scheduled every Tuesday, Tuesday at one o'clock Eastern, I believe, yeah, one o'clock Eastern, 10 o'clock Pacific. And those are scheduled to be 50 minutes. And we'll bring on both experts from within the group to facilitate discussions. We'll also bring experts outside of the group to facilitate discussions around key themes and topic areas. And the topic this first for the first month is really around getting the new year off to the right start, building your operating system for both your your family, your business, yourself, making the right decisions around how you set things up from a tax perspective. We'll have uh, Scott Cornelius on to talk about that from a CPA perspective. How do you structure the legal side of the business? So we're bringing people in, both folks that are part of the community and people outside of the community to help us all get better, be better, and do better. And you know, just you hear, hearing Jen talk about the struggle with purpose. Imagine being in a household where you're struggling with purpose and you have someone who has uh, operates with a high level of directness <laughs> relative to purpose. Could you imagine that? No. Why are you laughing then? I don't know anybody that would live in that kind of an environment. It can, it can be. And, I, and what does it feel <laughs> like? No, it's, it was seriously, like, what's it feel like? It, it's hard at times, but it also can be motivating. It's inspiring. I, I, I think it's great when people... I think it's, yeah, I think it's great when people know what their purpose is. It's frustrating to me because it's like, oh, I wish I knew too, but it's great. I I think it, it would be great if I, if I knew mine too, but it is a good environment to be around for when you're trying to raise a family, because then the kids see that also. And they, and honestly, they've seen both sides. They've seen me struggle with, and they've seen, you know, exactly. So we have kids that are kind of one of each actually. <laughs> But it's okay. Everybody's on their own journey, and everybody gets there. But it um, it's good for kids to witness it and see it, and and the and the work that goes into to it from both sides. Because you 
do a lot of work. It just looks like it's easier and it's not necessarily easier just from my perspective, because I struggle with it so much. You doing it just makes it look like you just know what, what you're doing and it's easy, but I know that's not true, but what? And everybody knows what my tells are. You know, like I start to bite my tongue or I have a vein that pops out on you know, my forehead or like there's all of these things. Yeah, I've pop. heard that comes out a lot on the golf course. It does, depending on who <laughs> I'm playing with and whether or not there are people behind us. And it's it just, there's this, there are these things that trigger us and there's these things that we experience as, as humans out there. And I know that sounds a little bit cliche to talk about, you know, humans doing better human things, but that's what we are. We're humans and we want to do better human things, whether that's the purpose of building a household and raising a family and creating a a situation where two high performing individuals can leave the house, perform at school, and then perform in the workplace and, and feel really good about themselves while doing really good work for others. Like that's a purpose for a period of time. And then that purpose starts to shift and change. And when the purpose shifts and change, it's important to ask a lot of these questions. And the hard part about the questions is you can fall into the trap of trying to answer them by yourself. And when you fall into the trap of trying to answer them by yourself, you start to feel a little bit less than you feel insecure, you lose confidence. So when you can lean on other people who've gone through a part of that journey, whether they're even just two steps ahead of you or 20 years ahead of you, you can you start to feel connected. You start to feel safe. You start to feel valued. You start to feel heard. You create this opportunity to work together. And I think that's why community is so important to me. And it's one of the things I think lacks in some of the communities that I've had a chance to participate in. Yeah. Well, and I think there's so many people, whether they'll say it out loud or not, that are really searching for that connection. Yep. It seems to be lost in a lot of things that we all do on our day-to-day lives. And I think people are really just searching for that, but but not only searching for that, but searching for good people that are not just going to get up and, and talk at you and talk big words and nothing ever happens with it, or they don't come alongside you and help you or, or say, Hey, I knew you were working on this. How's it going? Those are, that's what we want to do is have that where people are, are, I guess, accountability partner type things where um, people are going to check in with others and, and not, not doesn't have to be work related. It could be, Hey, you were going to do this with your family. Did you go do it or whatever? Um, Just to really make it a personal connection with people, because I really think that's missing in so many areas of our lives right now. And I think it would be great to bring it back and have people really feel connected and feel good about themselves and and what they're a part of. Yeah. And it's, it's hard when you get involved in community groups that are focused on a specific thing, like, and this is the weird, kind of the weird part about both taking a very narrow niche focus on trying to bring the right people in, but also keeping it open to all of the people who are looking to build together and grow together. And, and I've, I'm fortunate enough to be a member of and part of a number of different communities, both learning communities and revenue communities. And the challenge in each of those is there's this echo chamber that happens. And sometimes the echo chamber is good. We're reinforcing things. We're building each other up. Sometimes it can be bad and it can slow down creativity and innovation. The other thing that can happen sometimes in these groups is we say the word collaborate, collaborative environment, collaboration, but when we're competing for some of the same resources or perceive ourselves as competing for some of the same resources or perceive ourselves as just trying to figure it out so we know what resources we want to go after, it can become a little bit too close and you're not as comfortable sharing openly the questions that you have or the things that you're looking for. So by pulling together a diverse group of people who have interest in leadership and interest in developing others and interest in growth and might be a park leader and another might be a travel agent and another might be someone who's just getting ready to launch their own business. We can start to the connection. The thing that makes us all the same or similar is that we're human beings and we can come together in that environment and through the learning and the lessons that come from everybody else's experience in other areas, we can get more creative in the way that we approach solutions. So that is one of the things that will make that will be different about this community 
versus any other community that's out there. And I, I think those specialized ones are really important still because there's value in being part of a marketing community or a revenue community or a learning community because you people get it and they know it and they know all of the things you're going through. But if you're looking to be creative and innovate and do things different, think differently, connecting around others with different experiences, you'll be surprised at what you what you might learn. So uh, what are you looking forward to in 2024 with what we're building? This connection. Like I can't wait, I can't wait for the first, the, well, we did an in-person thing in, in December where there was a small group of us who were in Epcot and walked around Epcot. And we also joined on to the Orlando Informer event, which is Matthew Miller's group uh, and did some stuff at Universal. And that was really cool. It's, it's awesome to get, to be around people and look at people in the eyes and shake hands and, even though I'm not a hugger hug in some instances, I've gotten better at the hugging thing <laughs> over time, or at least more comfortable with it. The, the thing I'm, there are a couple of things I'm looking forward to one, who we can attract in the community Two, who we repel, like who we push out. And it's not necessarily just pushing them at, pushing people out that are in the people who are in are in, but it's you know, who, who comes in and says, you know what, this isn't for me. This is not what I'm looking for. Because if we can attract the right people and repel the wrong people or repel the people that we want to, we're going to, we'll be able to improve the taste of the soup with every new piece of new ingredient that we add in there. So, I mean, I'm excited about the growth. I'm also really excited about the event that we've got planned on the 21st, 22nd, 23rd in Orlando. And we'll be in the Disney April. Springs area. Yep. In, in Orlando in <laughs> April. Thank you. you see, uh-huh. Jen's the one who keeps everything going. <laughs> they're, they're, yeah. I, I mean, can you imagine what Jen has to go through with you know, the ideas that pop in and then we're like, okay, well, let's go, let's start doing work. And it's like, mm, let's slow <laughs> down. Let's, let's stay focused. So in April, we are going to run Phoenix Con, which is the first Phoenix Club uh, event for 2024. And our uh, methods for the group really fall into three categories. There'll be two annual, two in-person events each year. There will be weekly Zoom or virtual events that happen each week on Tuesdays at one o'clock, like we said. And we're going to look at adding in some other ones just to help with some of the time zone challenges. And then there's going to be asynchronous stuff, the thing that happens kind of in the margin, whether whether it's in our uh, site or in Facebook or a couple of other ways where we congregate as a group that there's a number of different ways that we'll interact with each other. The in-person one that we're doing in April is really exciting because we've got three days of, of, of kind of both designed and organic work, social that activity that'll happen on the first day when everybody comes in conference workshop, rolling our sleeves up, working together, learning together, facilitated type discussions around specific topics that the community is interested in. And then we're going to do a a day in the park led by one of the community members, Jeff Barnes, uh, is going to lead uh, a guided tour around the Magic Kingdom and connect the dots between a lot of the things that happened in the first two days and and what we see in, in an environment like the Magic Kingdom. So I am really excited about it and can't wait to see not only how well we do with getting people to come together and we attract to it, but also what we learn with that. So those are my big three things. Yeah. I'm excited about the April event also, because I've never met any of the people in person. So that will be fun. Um, And then we already have a couple of new people that haven't been in before and hopefully we'll have some more, but if they can attend, it'd be great to meet them also. Um, And then I think it's been really fun so far to plan our monthly weekly, but but we've been doing it by month and theme to plan those upcoming calls because we have listened to what people that were in the group were looking for and wanting and and needing maybe. And we tried to plan those upcoming months to fit into things that people had been asking for. And I think there's some really cool stuff coming up that hopefully people really enjoy and learn a lot um, and get a lot out of it. What else are you excited about for 2024? Just in general or? (laughs) Either take it either way. Yeah. Well, I mean, our youngest is graduating from high school, so that's going to be exciting and also a little sad. I'm excited to see what he's going to do. There's kind of a lot of balls in the air right now. So just kind of seeing how that all falls together. 
growing this group, I think is going to be a lot of fun. I think, I don't know, there might be times where it gets to be a little tricky or a little hard, but that's okay. We'll just figure it out, but it's fun to, to learn new things and get to know new people and know what they're interested in and all that kind of stuff. It's hard for me to really plan out too far with that kind of stuff. I just don't, um, I don't operate that way like you do. So, um, but yeah, I, 2024, it, it's going to be, well, personally, it'll be a little exciting and a little sad for me. So, it's a, It is one of the themes that we've been talking about and been sharing a little bit, at least I, yeah, I've been sharing a little bit on you know, places like LinkedIn and a little bit on Twitter. And I think we'll do a podcast episode about it, but 2023 has been a year of last and a year of first and 2024 will continue to be a year of last and a year of first. And it's, it's, uh, it provides an opportunity to reflect on the last and how much we enjoyed them and what, how they helped build this foundation of what we have. And then also be comfortable looking to the future and thinking about what will come as uh, as we continue to build in the future what scares you about the community just that people don't feel like they're seen or heard yeah. or that we get the people i don't i don't want to attract people that are rude <laughs> or not a nice way to say it but i don't want any assholes in here like you, you got to come in with the mindset of you're going to be nice and helpful and just know that you have something to offer, but so do the other people in the group. Um, so we're all here to learn from one another and to build each other up. Of course, sometimes you're going to need to maybe point out something that somebody's doing that maybe isn't a, the best thing for them, but in a nice way. Um, so I know I'm, those things make me a little nervous. Like, how are we going to ensure we get the people that we, that are there for the right reasons? Yeah. Yeah. Th- I- it scares me too, because there's um, and I and I like the no asshole rule. And I did a guy that I used to work with. His name's Frank Crothers. Um, would always talk about how there's always one asshole in the room, and if you can't identify the asshole, you might be it. <laughs> Even though we're gonna we're gonna work through the process of 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 that, and we'll do that through both the combination of how who we attract and and who we repel, who this thing is for, and who it's not for. We know that it will build, that we'll build together. And I think there's a, there's got to be another view or it's important for us to maintain another view, which is if we bring in the right people who are coming in with a view of being in service of others and you know, growing together through helping others grow and then learning at the same time, then it's important for us to trust that when feedback comes in and when people contribute information and when people ask questions, it's always coming from a foundation of helping people be better, do better, think differently, do differently. Is That's that catalyst for growth, that catalyst for innovation. And that's the connection to all of the stuff that we're doing. So you know, some people might be wondering, okay, wait a second. You've had Catalyst Sale, you've got Catalyst Acts. Where does all of this fit in? And uh, one of the things I shared last week around purpose was my purpose is to be a catalyst for change, to help people do the things they want to do better and faster. And we do that through community like this. We do that through uh, curating resources, like the resources we'll bring in. We'll do that through creating environments where people feel safe, feel heard, feel understood. And that is, that's our commitment. Jen, anything else to share with folks? Has anything not come up that come, has anything not come up that you would have, that we should have talked about? I don't think so. I'm just really excited to get going, which we'll start. What's today's the 31st of tomorrow. We'll get going. Actually, we moved it. We moved the start date up. And this was an executive decision where I just pushed something through just because I had a wild idea. I saw that there were a lot of people getting married on to married today. Like Vegas has got this whole thing set up at the airport where they're doing, where they're running through weddings weddings, at the airport, weddings at the airport. So, and why do you think, why are they doing weddings at the airport? I don't know. I mean, what, so they can fly away. (laughs) So, because it's a really interesting date. Today is 12, well, 31, oh. 23. 
So it's one, two, three, one, two, three. I see. When you look at the dates. So in the context of things always happening in threes and seeing that or hearing that, I was like, man, we've got to push the date up. So I made an executive decision and posted something on LinkedIn saying oh. that this was coming on 1231, 23. <laughs> and this okay, is- Okay, well, today. <laughs> and, and here we are. So if you're listening to this, go to- findmycatalyst.com forward slash the Phoenix club. We'll include links in the show notes. You can sign up. If this sounds like something that you're interested in, you can see a little bit more, hear a little bit more. If you have questions, send me a direct message. Most of you will know how to get a hold of me or send Jen and I uh, both messages. We'll include the email on this, which is still hello at catalystsale.com. And yeah, so this is official. We're launching it today. And I, I it, it is important to recognize again that we're standing on the shoulders of giants as we're building this. This started with the perch, which Dan started back in 2020. It I think it was the it was toward the end of 2020, it might have been beginning of 2021, but it started with the perch. It moved forward with the Phoenix Club when Jody took over the group and started leading the group in October, November of 2022. And we're honored and excited to take over the group here in 2023 as we transition into 2024. So if you are looking for a community that is committed to helping you rise, helping you be a better version of yourself, helping you grow and where you want and where you can have an opportunity to help others grow together, this might be the place for you. And we're excited to, we're excited to kick it off. Yeah. We hope to see you guys in there and in April. And in April, April is going to be awesome. Like this is, we're, April is going to be awesome. And you have to be a member of the, of the club or of the community to, to participate in the event in April. The other thing we did, and this was based on feedback, like feedback loops are very important. One of the pieces of feedback we got was, what about spouses? How do spouses or partners or significant others or you know, kids, other family members get involved? So we've actually opened up a way for family members to be involved. And one member brought along a family member and they were the ones who led in, Kim and Ross led the uh, cocktail hour mm-hmm. uh, session. Um, so again, building together, getting engaged, you can get as engaged as you want. And we want you to get engaged, but we've created an opportunity for uh, for spouses and other family members to be a part of this as well. The event in Orlando will be for Phoenix Club members only, and it is going to be absolutely freaking awesome. And we're going to learn a lot. And remember, there's only one first. Right. You don't want to miss it. You don't want to miss it. So we'll wrap things up. If you know of somebody who would enjoy this, podcast episode, please share it with them. If you think they, they're they looking for community and they've struggled with finding it, they've struggled finding their place, struggled finding someone who can help with those questions around purpose and pulling out a plan to move things forward, this just might be the group for them. You don't need to be a business owner. You can be. You don't need to be an entrepreneur. You can be. You don't need to be a solopreneur. You can be. You don't need to be leading a family, but you can be. You can just be someone who really wants to help people get better. If you know somebody like that and you're looking to get better, please share this episode with them. Let Jen and I know via LinkedIn. Jen's not on Twitter, but I'm on Twitter. or It's not even Twitter anymore. But let us know via LinkedIn, X, or Instagram. The shares help. And we are just getting started. And we are going to build this thing together. Well, and as we say, LFG let's fucking go so, <laughs> but now, we, now we have to market explicit dang it jen you, you, you well, i didn't say it i said lfg you said it yeah but it, so that's and that's what it sounds like at our kitchen table so if you want to know <laughs> words that get used around the house and i was accused earlier this year of cursing more than i usually do remember i'm originally from new york so this is all part of my part of my vocabulary Sales is a thinking process. Business is a thinking process. Life is a thinking process. How are you thinking differently about your process? 